from Force 13 HQ and from our contributors from around the world. This is August 30th, 2018. Hello and welcome to Tropical Weather Bulletin for August the 30th, 2018. Three cyclones active as well as one invest and one soon to be invest we expect as well. And I think you may know which if you've been tracking things closely. We'll tell you all about it. Let's first take a look at what's going on then in the Eastern Pacific though because that's where most of the action actually is. Uh, two hurricanes that are currently active. Miriam expected to peak with winds of around 85 miles an hour in the next 12 hours it's currently at 75 and so is Norman uh, but it's expected to be much stronger we're expecting the storm to get to 150 miles an hour a little bit higher than the National Hurricane Center's forecast uh, but we expect that some significant strengthening could occur on this storm as it proceeds through the eastern and maybe ending up in the central Pacific um, Miriam is of no real threat to Hawaii, uh, I don't believe any rain even associated from the storm will end up over there. Um, and Norman, we still don't know yet, it's going to be a very long term feature as to whether Norman is going to get anywhere near the Hawaiian Islands um, ultimately or not. Okay, let's take a look at the North Atlantic. A 50% chance in the next five days for this system that's moving off the coast of Africa. Um, it's got decent model support. It could develop into even a hurricane maybe uh, in the next week. Uh, but don't quote us on that just yet because we really don't know what is going to occur out of this. It's very early days. Uh, suffice to say, we don't anticipate that it's going to be an Irma, which was developing last year. I've already seen one comment pertaining to that. Uh, no, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, we do expect, maybe, that this storm will end up being a bit further north and track across the central Atlantic, and either a recurve or maybe a little bit more of an Isabel-like track, but certainly not near its strength. Early indications showing that it could get to low or moderate hurricane status, uh, but it's really too early to speculate any actual numbers. The Cape Verde Islands, though, could be a target, an early target in this new storm that could be developing um, and could have some ramifications um, similar, as you may remember, to Fred of 2015, but a bit further south. I would perhaps liken it a bit more to Fran of 1984, at a worst case scenario. The North Indian is quiet. The Western Pacific has Typhoon Jebby. Uh, it's now a Category 2. Uh, it's intensifying substantially as it approaches the Northern Mariana Islands, mostly uninhabited, uh, and it could reach those islands at major typhoon status maybe. We're expecting it to peak at winds of 150 miles an hour. That's in line with the Joint Typhoon Warning Center's last update. There's also Invest 96W further south there, not too far from Palau, only a low chance of development on that and most models blow it off as a very short-term feature that ends up in the Philippines very little remaining of it at all that's everywhere nothing in the southern hemisphere at this time as far as we know let's take a look at some satellite imagery uh, that image uh, yes here it is the eastern pacific uh, you can see uh, somewhere the remnants of lane although i'm not sure that system moving up towards the north there northwest of hawaii is actually lane i think that's a new system that propped up uh, in its wake i think what is remaining of lane is that southernmost spit of convection in that system so lane is indiscernible now uh, but then, you, of course, you've got the two hurricanes there. Miriam still moving in a general westward direction, but we do expect a pretty quick northward turn occurring in the next 12 to 24 hours, much sooner than Lane ever did. And then, of course, Norman on the right-hand side, uh, we expect it to turn maybe a little bit towards the west-southwest, not particularly uncommon in hurricanes in that area, um, to have a slight southerly component in its movement, uh, but that's what we expect in the next few days. And it, gradual recurvature after that but how much and how soon is still debatable the Atlantic uh, you may just about be able to see that tropical wave over Africa on the very right hand side of the left image um, towards the bottom there on the GOES-16 geocolor satellite imagery not much else going on apart from a very uh, flustered looking Gulf Coast 
uh, significant thunderstorms by the looks of things, especially over Florida at this time, at the time of broadcast, and the general thunderstorm activity that you would expect along a lot of those Caribbean islands as well. Okay, here's the West Pacific. Uh, you can see the latest from Himawari 8, day breaking over the over Typhoon Jebby, and you can also see the Invest further to the southwest there. Not much going on with that by the looks of things, but Jebby, I must say, is looking pretty good on its structure. We'll just fast forward because we've got floater images of those as well. Here they are. And to point out, on the right hand side there, the central images, that is Miriam. On the right hand side, it's Norman. And for the first time, we can present them to you on Go 17, the new satellite, the newest satellite from uh, NOAA and NASA, uh, putting out the Go's West output now as it is. And on the left hand side, the Himawari output for Typhoon Jebby. A little bit of a closer look there, and it's looking pretty decent. The eye should be on its way out very soon. Uh, there was an eye feature in Norman as well, uh, but convection has flared up over that again. Uh, not a sign of particular weakening or anything like that. It is a sign of consolidation, perhaps, and maybe some further strengthening will ensue a little bit later on tonight. Uh, let's now go back uh, the sea surface temperatures we'll have a quick look at that you can see general temperatures there uh, decent for the east pacific storms 26 to 28 degrees as norman goes further south it could have a little bit more energy the western pacific is pretty warm there's a little cooler slick just south of japan from previous storms i assume um, so that may uh, mitigate the intensity of Jebby as it comes to it, uh, but models are indicating that it could significantly affect Japan, and I think that's what we're going to be going on to next. Okay, here are the models. As soon as I can get the screen loading and playing, this is what the GFS output shows for the next few days. First of all, the Atlantic. So you're looking to the right hand side, you can see that new system moving out and quickly becoming a tropical storm, brushing the southernmost Cape Verde Islands. And GFS thinks it will get to hurricane status as it leaves those islands over the weekend, heading off towards the west northwest, out into the open Atlantic. You can see the track is not like Irma, so we'll end the comparisons there. It's a much further north track uh, of that. Uh, now we're looking at the Eastern Pacific. You can see the two hurricanes there as well. Um, Norman obviously being much stronger. Miriam maybe a little eastward dive there before moving back towards a northwesterly track. And there you can see Norman looking very strong into the weekend and into the early part of next week. GFS starting to turn it by Monday and it looks like, according to that model, that it will follow the course of Miriam after that. Any deviation to the south, just watching there, it uh, slightly at the end there, at the end of that one. It's, one. it's one we'll have to keep watching very closely. Jebby, this is coming into the end of the week again, striking the northern Mariana Islands. It looks like it initialized the storm fairly weak there, uh, so it could be stronger than what we're looking at by this point. At least Category 3 there, probably Category 4, maybe even having a chance of getting to Category 5 status. Now this is just indicative, it's long range by the time we get to Tuesday, Wednesday, but the minute GFS is saying that it will go to Japan and could strike the Tokyo area as a Category 4. Let's not set the alarm bells off just yet, that's a very long way out and it is one of many scenarios we've been looking at over the last few days, including the ECMWF at one point yesterday saying that it would stall near Kyushu for three days. So anything is possible out of Jebby in relation to Japan. North Indian Ocean as we're looking at now, looking very quiet, no storms expected there over the next few days. Yep, looking pretty dead. So let's return now and uh, there's one or two other things I'd like to show you before we finish up this tropical weather bulletin. Uh, the computer models. Uh, the HWRF first of all, you can see its output for these two storms that I've selected. Jebby on the left hand side, it thinks it will get to high end category 4 as well. Same for Norman, not far from category 5 status. Its neighbour the HMON model has been saying recently that it would get to 180 miles per hour in one model run. I don't think that's going to happen by anyone's optimistic expectations, uh, but Category 5 can't be ruled out for Norman or Jebby. 
And this is another look at some uh, models that I've selected here, this time for Miriam on the left hand side. Ignore those two statistical models, they have no bearing on this actual, uh, they don't have the input required to make a good call on where the storm's going to go. That's the sort of models they would have used back in the 60s and 70s, uh, but we're looking at the models further north there, which gives us a pretty good consensus of where Miriam is going to end up. Um, somewhere towards the north, a little eastward kink maybe, and then off towards the northwest in earnest, far away from the Hawaiian Islands. And Norman on your right hand side there, a little bit less um, certainty, but a general westward motion is all we need to know about that. And this is another look at Norman. Uh, you can see the intensity charts there, and as you can see, H1 almost off the charts at category 5, 175 miles an hour in its last, uh, in its last um, run. The previous one was 180, but you can see the moles all across the board for intensity there. Uh, but I would say, uh, by the law of averages, usually a storm in Norman's position um, out uh, it exceeds a national hurricane center prediction and they're saying 130 so make of that what you will wind shear is going to be fairly low until day three when it gets to moderate sea surface temperatures decent and relative humidity not too bad and one more thing i believe uh, 2018 to date i'd like to show you this as well uh, this is for the atlantic uh, you can see how we've been doing compared to the forecast that Force 13 came out with at the start of the year. Uh, it's pretty much running to schedule. It's been a little bit ahead of schedule time and again, uh, but we're pretty much where we expected to be for the end of August, up to five named storms, but possibly more on the way. And now to Force 13's outlets. You can follow Force 13's outlets, the website force13.com with you at any time. You can also find our YouTube page if you're not there already, subscribed hopefully. And you can also follow our Facebook page, search Force 13 all in text. Videos are now there as well. And you can follow us on Twitter, at Force 13 is our handle. And it's hashtag F13 Sulik if you'd like to draw our attention to anything in future live events or whatnot. You can also help the project become even better by becoming a patron with its various rewards that come with that feature as well. And you can add me personally, Fool13 at extension 9094 on Discord and Force13 on Skype for Tropical Weather Chat. <laughs>